when someone encapsulates the very pulse and nerve of our times, it's only right that somebody talk about it. This is written by Mr. Abe Shukla, XIAS officer. It's called the Lockdown Diaries, and it goes a little something like this. This is not about the sorry exodus of millions of our more unfortunate brothers and sisters playing out on Prime TV these days. It is not a piece about the government or about politics or economics. This piece is about me and the burden I carry. A burden of shame that has been sitting on my back for the last few weeks and cannot be dislodged no matter how hard I try. It's a burden which just got heavier this morning when I read a post by an army officer describing his moving encounter in Gurgaon with families of migrants walking on their way to Bihar. No footwear on the weary soles, treading on melting roads, hungry and uncomprehending four-year-olds of how they wept and tried to touch his feet when he gave them a few 500 rupee notes. At belonging to a country and a society which exiles tens of millions from their cities, fearful of catching an infection from them, from a virus brought here not by them, but my brethren flying in from abroad of treating the hapless victim as the perpetrator. Ashamed of being a gullible cretin who swallows all the lies and half-truths churned out by a dissembling official apparatus of beating pots and pans as a servile hosanna to an uncaring presiding deity to drown out the sounds of tired feet marching to their distant villages. I can no longer recognize the religion I was born into. It no longer has the wisdom of its ancient sages and rishis, or the compassion of an Ashoka, or the humility of a Gandhi. It is too full of anger, hatred, of violence, it has replaced its once lofty ideals with even loftier statues carrying deeds with dead rituals. It once fed the mendicant and the poor, but now drives them away as carriers of some dreadful disease without any proof. It even finds an opportunity in this pandemic to stigmatize other religions. I am ashamed of my middle class status of many of my friends, colleagues, and the larger family even cocooned safely in our gated societies and sectors. We have locked out our maids, our drivers, our newspaper man, delivery boy, and a dozen others who have built for us the comfortable lives we now desperately try to cordon off from the less fortunate. We have deprived them of their livelihoods. Our primary concerns revolve around the resumption of deliveries from Amazon and Swiggy. The lot of the migrating millions is dismissed as just their fate, the final subterfuge of a society that no longer cares. For the life of me, I am unable to comprehend how we, sitting in our 4BHK flats, have the heartlessness to blame 16 tired laborers for their own deaths. Why were they sleeping on railway tracks? How can one not be ashamed when I hear my peers decrying the expense of trains and buses for the returning migrants, the costs of putting them up in quarantine, when they approve of their likes being flown back by Air India? This is not double standards, this is bankrupt standards. I am ashamed of the dozens of four-star generals and very boned admirals and air chiefs who were quick to shower flowers and light up ships at a dog whistle from a politician but did not move a finger to provide any help to the marching millions. Did it even occur to them that they owe a duty to this country beyond strutting around at India Gate? That they could have used their vast resources and vaunted training to set up field kitchens for the hungry marchers, putting up tents where the old and the infirm could catch a few breaths. Arrange transport for ferrying at least the few. The veiler has been tested at the borders, but their conscience has certainly been found wanting. I am ashamed of a bureaucracy that uses a catastrophe 
to further enslave those who have already lost everything, which insists that illiterate laborers fill in online forms to register for evacuation, pay hundreds of rupees which they do not have for rail tickets, to produce ration cards and Aadhaar cards before they can get five kilos of rice, and all the while being beaten to a pulp. They will reach their homes, ultimately, those marching millions, minus a few thousand who will die on the way. They will not even be mentioned in the statistics. There will be no Schindler's list for them. And we will pat ourselves on our collective genuflecting backs that one problem has been taken care of. The danger to our neoliberal civilization has been beaten back. The carriers have been sent away. The curve will now flatten. The Joe, the mirror has cracked and can never be made whole again. And as the bard said, the fault is not in our stars, but within us. Actually, this piece is not just about me, but it's also about you, dear reader. Look into that cracked mirror and tell me, do you feel any shame, just a little, for what we have become? for the lost soul of a once great nation. This was written by Mr. Ravi Shukla, XIAS, and it resonated with me, so I'm reading it out so it resonates with you. Peace. <laughs>